I love Helldivers. It's some of the most fun I've had in recent years in any game at launch. I think it's epic taking on hordes of PvE enemies in a cinematic experience with explosions and bits of bugs or robots just flying everywhere. And it's no secret that Helldivers was inspired by the Starship Troopers movie. So I was super excited when I heard that a Starship Troopers game came out this year and I was hyped to try it out. This is what I thought of it. Now, Starship Troopers Extermination isn't exactly another Helldivers game. It's similar in the way that it is a PvE co-op experience against hordes of alien enemies, but there are a few differences. For example, there is actually the ability to build bases in this game. This is something I always wanted in Helldivers. The ability to properly hunker down and fortify a position before defending it from a tidal wave of bugs, it just sounds awesome. Starship Troopers also has designated classes, with each class having a multitude of features that are unique to it as well as different unlockable weapons. Another difference is another thing that I would love to see in Helldivers, it has a much larger scale, with the ability for 16 player teams composed of 4 4 player fire teams. I was so excited when reading about these features thinking I was going to jump into an epic larger scale version of Helldivers, however upon launching the game this wasn't exactly the case. I started a tutorial, which mostly focused on teaching you about the building, which was fine. But the issues came when I went to hop into a game online. I was searching for a game in matchmaking for about 10 minutes without finding anything. This did surprise me because it was a Saturday afternoon at about 2 or 3 o'clock I think it was. But when I checked out the current player numbers I saw only 400 people online. This forced me to have to try and play the solo mode. Which I was fine with at first, I have no problems playing games by myself, but I was a bit gutted that I wasn't going to experience this massive scale that I'd hoped for. But I figured I'd try it out and make a video which I could use to convince all of my mates to get into the game with me. So I went through and I changed class every mission just to see what each one was like and they all had different weapons, abilities and gear from each other. Now we have 6 classes in Starship Troopers. Two of which being your heavy troops, you got your assault troops, and you got what's labelled as your support troops. The first of the heavy troops is the Guardian. This is actually my favourite class. It's your kind of typical tank role. You've got an ability where you press Q and you enter a siege mode, which essentially surrounds you with a little wall that you can hunker down behind and just hose down enemies with your LMG. It's great for holding a position and honestly seemed to really work with the missions that I played. Then you've got your Demolisher. This is a heavy roll on the fact that it's just got a big explosive weapon. It's got a grenade launcher and also the ability barrage which just fires a back mounted gun to launch a huge explosion at the enemies. You'll see this weapon on his back when he's firing it, kind of like a, an artillery cannon. This guy was great for just clearing out big groups of enemies but I didn't like the fact that I kept blowing myself up when things got too close. Now moving on to the assault troopers, we'll start with the sniper. This troop is essentially everything it says on the tin. It's a guy with a sniper and a jetpack. Moves fast as well. Pretty fun class, I actually really did enjoy it. The sniper was pretty good. Uh, really hard hitting and very easy to use. And then we move on to the other assault trooper, the ranger. Now the ranger, pretty much the same thing. But you've got an assault rifle, instead of a jump pack, you've got a boost jet to kind of boost you forward rather than up. This is the most mobility I found out of any of the troops. Then if we move on to the support classes, you've got the engineer. Now this guy's whole thing is about repairing stuff and my favourite ability of his was the fact that he can put a gas canister on his back in his backpack rather than carrying it in his hand which if you've played Helldivers it's like picking up um, any of the objectives you got to carry it in your hand you can use your secondary weapon but in this game you can't even use your secondary weapon you're just carrying something. This guy can stick it on his back and carry on shooting which is great. He can also repair things at range and then we've got the final troop which is the medic. Exactly again exactly what it says on the tin. You're a healer, you've got a little drone that can whiz around you, revive people and anyone who's in your kind of aura range, they'll stay down for longer without dying. Now I really liked the idea of the building, but if I'm honest, I found the single player mission so easy that I never really felt the reason or even thought of the reason to use it. I'd love to see this feature added to Helldivers though, it'd be so cool to call in some sort of drop box that gave you supplies to build a little outpost and hold a position from waves of bots or bugs or Maybe even a horde survival game type, it would be awesome. I was really looking forward to the insane performances and sense of humour from the Starship Troopers movie. 
But I didn't see any of this at all. In fact, all the voice acting in the game is very kind of stereotypical and flat and not really very engaging at all. It felt very bland in tone, which I was a bit disappointed by if I'm honest. I played through 15 of the solo missions, which sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. Although there is only 25, but it only took a few minutes to complete each one. Honestly, every mission felt like the same thing repeated. 90% of the time, I was just walking through a cave, shooting a group of bugs, walking through a cave, shooting some odd bugs, and then the mission would be over. It was honestly a bit boring and didn't even really get challenging, let alone have any form of variety to it. Every single enemy I met was a case of shoot it until it dies. There was seemingly zero need for any strategy other than just press the mouse button. I mostly did play the LMG class, so maybe this is a reflection on the class being overpowered or something. Upon hearing that, my response would just be, well, why do we have such an overpowered class in the game? All I did was walk forward, press Q to fortify, hold my mouse button until everything died, press Q again, walk forward, press Q, hold my mouse until everything died. Now, another complaint I have is with the AI. The AI in this game is horrible. It might be some of the worst I've seen in recent times. So many times, I would just end up seeing bugs stood there doing nothing. And the pattern of my AI squad mates was horrific. I constantly ended up playing without them because they would just walk off an edge to their death. Or just walk into something and, re and refuse to ever go around it, just being stuck there for the rest of the mission. Now, in regards to me finding the game a bit boring, it's likely that that's just because they've built this game for a 16 player mode or even their horde survival mode, but without the player base to support these modes, I was stuck in an incredibly underwhelming single player mode and was very disappointed all around by it. I don't really see a reason why I would play this game again when something like Helldivers exists. If I'm missing something then please do let me know in the comment section, but I'm sure the horde mode would be fun or even the 16 player mode, as long as there's some form of difficulty. But I just wasn't able to try these things out because of the lack of player base. Maybe it would be worth trying this game if you've got a big group of people to play with or if it's on sale or something like that. But other than that, I probably wouldn't bother to be honest. So overall, I was really disappointed, but it does have a cool premise. I do hope they build upon this and maybe in the future I'll be able to make another video about how it's now a great game and we should all go and play. I really hope it has some sort of redemption arc for me. But until then, thank you for watching. If you have played the game, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And thank you very much.